Shia here and welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for being here. Today I'm going to do a video for Absolute Beginners to Fluid R. I'm going to go through five steps to getting started. So number one is going to be your setup of your area and the tools that you're going to need. Number two will be basic recipes for your paints and I'll probably go through three basic, very basic recipes. Uh, number three is consistency of your paints and I will go through three or four consistencies. Uh, number four is I'm going to go through five simple techniques for you to create some beautiful art. And number five will be drying and finishing your paintings with either resin or some different types of varnish. So let's get started. Let's go and make some art. So to start with, you just need a table, any table will do. You cover it with plastic, like hard plastic. And I have these silicone mats, which when you pour your paint and you get bits on the side, it just easily peels. Everything I'm talking about today will be in, the, in my description. And you can go and press the link on my description and take you straight to uh, the Amazon shop uh, where you can buy the exact same tools or products. So I, I just cover it with these mats because it's just easy just to peel the paint off. Uh, you can get yourself a Lazy Susan, but that's not uh, essential. That's just makes things easier. Instead of turning the canvas, you can turn the turntable for certain techniques, but I would leave that for now. So you will need a hairdryer. Any hairdryer will do. One that, that's not too powerful, but that has two settings. Uh, you can get a small one, and nozzles always good because then it concentrates the air and you have more control when you're doing like a dash pole. You'll need some paint stands or, so these are again in my description, paint stands that you stand your canvas on so that it's not sitting in puddles of paint. Or you can use these giant push, push pins which you use a, a hammer and get them all level so that your, your canvas is level. Um, Spirit level will be very handy to make sure your canvas is level when you've got it on the table. We want some cups, any cups will do, plastic cups, uh, paper cups, any small cups for mixing your paints in. I like to use these silicone cups and again they're in the description um, because again the paint just peels out. back with water to tighten up the canvas. So you let it, let it dry and that tightens up the canvas. So you will need some masking tape. You don't have to, but if you mask the underneath of your canvas, just at the back, just at the back here to keep it clean. Some people don't, but I like to keep it clean at the bottom. Then you have paints. And we're going to go through the paints in a, min in a minute, the different types of paints that you can get. But we're going to keep it simple. Um, so when, when, I, when I get to the part where we're mixing, I'll explain to you the different types of paints. We need some water. And you can get paint conditioner. This is our troll. This is uh, from the UK. You can have glue. So Elmer's glue, glue all, um, and that will be mixed with water, and I'll tell you the ratios. Uh, some varnish, so I use high gloss uh, varnish, um, or you can get Liquitex gloss pouring medium. This is the varnish, but you can get the pouring medium. Um, some 
stir sticks. You can use anything, but these stir sticks I get from the supermarket and they're quite good. So I'll get to, to the mixing part um, and basic recipe. Let me talk about some paints. These are all acrylic paints and that is what we use for fluid art. We have heavy body acrylic paint, which is fairly thick. We have soft body, which is a medium thickness. And we have fluid, which is a thinner type of paint. Now, that does not mean that the pigment is any less in the thinner type of paints. The pigments are to do with the brands and the quality. So these are all highly pigmented paints and these are all the ones that I love to use. So the heavy bodied paint will need probably more water and you will require special mixing. So you start off very slowly when you're mixing a heavy body paint, otherwise you just get lumps. Uh, medium is, you'll need less water and this even less water because it's more fluid. So I'll get to the part where we can mix up some colors off with the heavy body paint and for the purposes of this video I'm going to use a measuring tool and this is a teaspoon of colour colour in there and then we're going to use a teaspoon of varnish and then we're going to mix that in first before we add anything else Mix, mix, mix. And with the heavy bodied paint, you're always going to need to mix, mix a little bit harder and a little bit more thoroughly. And that's quite good. I always put the varnish in first because that makes sure that the paints get a nice glossy feel to them. So get them to incorporate. And then we're going to do three parts of my glue mix, which is 60% glue and 40% water. And it depends on the glue. You might need a little bit more water, a little bit less water, but that's what mine is. So some, some use 50-50. And then just mix, mix, mix that really well. And you can see it's so very creamy. Now, for most techniques, you're going to need to put more water in this. So this is the thickest consistency on the scale for consistencies. And I think there are charts that you can download from the internet. And as you can see, it's very creamy. Um, and it goes into the cup with a mound on, on top of a mound and disappears after three or four seconds. Now this, this kind of consistency would be good for a bloom technique, um, but the bloom technique is quite an advanced technique and you should check out Shelley Arts uh, for bloom technique. She does a course. Now you can always use this kind of consistency for a ring pour or a ribbon pour or maybe a string pour, but we're going to keep it simple for today. And so this is the thickest consistency. So I'll leave, I'll leave that as a thick consistency for now, so that we can compare later. So next, I'm going to use OA troll, which is the same as a flow troll. America uses flood flow troll. Australia uses Australian uh, flow, troll, flow troll and this is the UK flow troll and it's a uh, paint conditioner and they just extend your paint. Uh, it's usually They usually kind of dull your painting a little bit but again I'm going to use varnish and then use this instead of the, the glue mix. So I'll use a medium body and this is Pearl Sea Green by Arteza and as you can see, can you see the little box here? There's a little box here, it's half filled in. This means that the paint is semi-transparent. If the, if the box was fully filled up and it was a black box, that would be an opaque color, which means that you can't see through it. 
and if it was empty, the box was empty, it means that it's completely transparent. So if you put an opaque colour on a transparent colour, you're not going to see it. So you would always put your transparent colours on top of your opaques and your semi-transparent colours. Kind of just make sure you're not sort of covering up, them up with an opaque so they will go on top. <clears throat> so, okay, we'll do half, half a teaspoon of this. Half a teaspoon in there. And then I'm going to do half a teaspoon of varnish. And mix that up again. As you can see, it's much easier to, to mix. And already it's incorporated. So the medium bodied are easier, much easier to mix. And then I'm going to do with the three parts of oh.
goes into the cup. It doesn't leave a mound. Okay, so next I will show you how to prepare a canvas and we'll get into some five simple techniques. So let's take the plastic off and you have these wooden pieces that you can hammer into the edges to tighten up the canvas even more when you've finished your artwork. So I'm going to spray the back with a little bit of water and that also tightens up the canvas so it's not saggy, especially if you've got a round canvas or a slightly bigger canvas. Just smooth that out. And we're going to five simple techniques but it's only going to be a snippet you can find videos on YouTube to how to do these more in depth so I'm just going to show you just for the purposes of this video uh, how a simple technique works um, now your base paint you can use any color you like most people use white or black or you can do a split base color now it's going to be slightly, it's always going to, for me, I prefer to have it slightly thinner than your design colours as that allows the design colours to flow nicely. And you always have to make sure, especially with a Dutch pour, that you have enough paint around it for it to flow. So I'm going to, another tip is use a little sieve when pouring out your base, base coat because sometimes you mixed it up a, you know, a few days before or a week, week before and sometimes it might have a few lumps in it. So let's go and pour the base, base coat. And this is a greeny grey base coat. So these are what I get off my leftover colours and I, I'll make a base, base coat add colours to it to make a base coat. So you're not wasting anything. And then you can use a, either a hair dryer to spread it. Or you can use a palette knife. You can tilt it however you feel more comfortable. I won't worry about the sides right now, so I can always touch them up after. But sometimes you just want to go around the sides and tidy, make sure the sides have got colour so that your 
your flow can flow off the sides. But for this video, I'm not going to worry about it too much for now. Okay, and you can see we have a few little bubbles. I'm going to use this torch to get the bubbles out, otherwise you'll have specks in your design. Like little tiny little dots of white or whatever your base colour is. Just gonna tilt it a little bit just to make sure it's a little so it's more even. And the way you know you've got not too much paint on your canvas is and she actually invented the Dutch pour. So you need a little bit more base coat so that the colours flow nicely. Flow over. And then okay. now you can imagine what you can do with this. It's it's endless and look how lovely it runs off the sides. You can do all sorts of designs, you can do flower designs. Yes beautiful and you'll just get some natural selling. I just want to talk about achieving sales. We, we do not have any cell activator in this but just the paint interactions and the different makes of paints creates cells and lacing. But if you want to if you want to achieve some cells I usually use uh, Montmartre silicone and it's just a few drops in your paint. I'm going to do a little bloom and it's a, kind of a Dutch pour, Dutch pour is again, but slightly different. Because we're going to use a cell activator in the middle to get some cells and just to get a flower look. So again, starting with the blue. And then the pink.
And then you get spoon. I'm blowing up glove. My balloon is a little bit deflated, so.
paint kisses or paint or balloon kisses or balloon smashes and they are pretty you can really go to town with those and then we have the ribbon pour now with the ribbon pour obviously I couldn't tilt too much because I've done all the techniques on one canvas um, but you would tilt that off and get some really lovely effects the same with the flip cup you would tilt it off and get some really really lovely effects but you can see where I put the silicone on in the in one of the colours, you get some nice cells and all this kind of lovely liney effects. Just so many beautiful effects that you can get with fluid art. And basically, the longest time it takes is mixing the colours. Actual painting takes a few minutes, and then it's the clean up. So the clean up and the mixing of colours takes the longest time. Um, so you can just get some beautiful paintings in just a few minutes. And also you can embellish them afterwards, go in with the gold pen or... Let me show you some varnish pieces and some resin pieces. So this, this is a piece that's been varnished and it's finished lovely. You have a nice clean back. You can always attach some hooks to it and you can sign it, maybe sign it at the side or at the bottom. I haven't signed this one yet, but you can see it just gives it a lovely finish. And all I do is I mix the varnish with say 30 to 40% water and I put it in a bottle and I, I have a cloth in a Tupperware which keeps it down. And then I just add a little bit of varnish and rub it really well with this soft cloth and give it about four or five coats in between, let, them, let, let it dry for half an hour and uh, give it about four or five coats and you get a lovely, lovely finish. Or maybe later on you want to start to resin your pieces and that's a, a whole other story, but you can see, you know, you need, you need to learn how to do it and there are lots of videos and there are um, safety precautions with resin, so, but it does give, give it a beautiful look. You can add mica powders and give it a little sparkle, I don't know if you can see that. And I mean you can see reflections in it, but it just gives it a, a lovely look. So I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, please give me a thumbs up, consider subscribing, share with your friends. This is quite a helpful video, I hope, for beginners. And if you do share, it doesn't cost you anything, leave me a comment and it will help to be pushed out to more people so they can uh, see, see it too. So thank you so much for being here and hopefully you'll be painting and making some masterpieces and enjoying the process because I find it very therapeutic. So thank you so much and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.